Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Well, good morning, guys. Would you turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians? We're going to go to chapter 3. This morning we're continuing our study through this beautiful passage of Scripture. We saw Paul, last time we were in this passage, Paul the Apostle said that he was really nothing. He said, I, I'm, you know, I'm nothing, Apollos is nothing. The people that were Cephas, Peter, you know, people were um, saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, you know. They, the, we saw that there was personality cults. That just like today, I mean, we have it today where people, you know, are following different folks. In, in that's my pastor. This is my pastor. That's my leader. You know, and um, Paul says we're really nothing. He said, "What? what it, we're just one one man." He says, "Plants another man waters," but it's God that is doing the work. It's God that's causing the growth. And so he tried to, you know, swing their attention heavenward. Don't be looking at the vessel that God is using. Look at the vessel that is trying to point you heavenward to our maker. And so it's a, it's a common problem, though, in a lot of um, churches, especially, I mean, the letter to the church at Corinth, they were a young church. They were new in, in the whole Christian experience. And they were um, in a very carnal society. They were in a society that was known for being, you know, the Las Vegas of the day. And so... It was kind of, you know, when you're surrounded by worldliness, you, sometimes that worldly attitudes rub off. And unfortunately, some of those worldly attitudes make their way into the church. I mean, they just come with the people. But today I'm going to show you something that Paul's going to point out that really makes us as people of the Lord have a, a, an upper hand against those attitudes. We have something that the world does not have and you know, if they only knew about it, I, I really believe they'd be going just making mega lines to get into churches because they would want this. But, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. What I'm going to tell you about some of the believers don't even seem to grasp. Even, even ones that have been in Christ for many years don't know about this passage. I mean, they, they may have heard it like, in pa you know, like, oh, I've heard that pastor. You're not telling me anything new. But when I, when I break it down and say, but... Do you live this passage? Because there's a difference between, yeah, I heard that, and I do that. Okay, And that's what we want to get to today. Let's go to the part where we left off. Paul has just tell, got done telling them in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that all of our work is going to be shown, uh, made evident, he says, by being tested by fire. Everything that we did in this life journey will eventually go through a a testing by God, a purification, and it will all pass through fire. And whatever we built that is of eternal value, that's what's going to come out the other side of the, of the kiln, okay? But anything we did in the flesh, any efforts of the flesh, that's going to burn up. And so Paul, knowing this, is telling these believers, look, if, if you know everything that you do, eventually it's going to be tested by a, pu a refining holy fire, Right? Does it change our, our attitude? I mean, what we put all our energy into? Like, uh, per personally, I don't know about you, but this one is a real quick attitude adjuster. If it, when you go to thinking about the things you're going to put all your energies into, you think, I is this what I'm doing going to have any eternal consequence, any eternal value? Will this make it through the fire to the other side and come out as a beautiful jewel? And I'll be going, yeah, I get to keep this for eternity. Or is what you're working on basically going to burn up and become nothing when, in the eternal scope of things? Because if we keep this perspective that everything that we put our, our thoughts, our energies into, we're trying to sow to things that will last forever. We're trying to, to lay, like Jesus said, lay up for yourself treasures where? In heaven. In heaven. In heaven. He says, in heaven... Moth and rust don't destroy. Thieves can't break in and steal. You know, I see so much energy in our society to get treasure. We got the treasure shows. I watched one last night, the Gold Rush show. They're just, you know, these guys are risking their life. It was crazy. 
I mean, freezing cold. Did anyone see the show where they dive through the ice and they go down in there and they're snorkeling? And the guys, said, they told them, we, we went to Alaska on our cruise here just recently. They told us if we would fall overboard, that if you didn't gasp the first second, which normally the body does, it hits the cold water, goes, <coughs> and it, usually if the person has plunged under the water, when they gasp, it goes right in their lungs and they die instantly. If you have the presence of mind to keep your lips above the water, when you gasp, <gasps> you have about three minutes till your body shuts down completely and you die then. So you buy yourself three minutes if you can just get that, you know. But they, they, the body hitting this water is like 34 degrees. It just goes into shock. And, you know, we were, our, our swim group here in, in Hawaii is texting to my wife, we're swimming this morning, wish you were here. Why don't you go for a swim there? And Jan's sending back pictures. And she just over the edge of the ship takes a shot and... The, the pieces of ice floating by are the size of refrigerators and cars, okay? And we're like, don't think so. You know, not going in there, right? Because it's just like, you got to And then I'm watching the show last night, and the whole, the whole, these crazy miners are out on the frozen ice. They drill a hole through the thing, and then they dive down in there, and there's only one hole to get back out. And they say, it's to, oh, by the way, if the water should stop, the hot water that's coming from the little umbilical cord should cease, the guy will die in a couple minutes. And the one guy's under there going, I can't get air. It's just some ice in my line. And his brother's going, what? You know, he's up at the little, the box ain't working. And the other guy's down there drowning, you know. And you're just watching the show going, this is great. You get to watch a guy die because he's trying to get this little thing nuggets of gold off the bottom of the ocean floor. And, and you know, after they went to all that trouble to get it, and they get up to the top, they say, oh, okay, we're going to expand our things. We're going to hire a couple guys, and they're, they're, the, they're, they're going to be the night crew, so we're going to double our production. It's funny, because I'm watching the, the, the three fellows. They're, they're called the Kelly family. They're from the Big Island. So, you know, I kind of, you know, just... Since we're here, I'm watching and going, oh, man, these guys are something else. And they hire these guys, and they wake up in the morning, and the guys they hired were gone. The equipment was trashed. And what do you think happened to the gold in the box that disappeared? And this verse that Jesus said, store up your treasure where? In heaven, not on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves, gold thieves, who are supposed to be your crew, trash all your stuff and steal. I mean, it's, it is, is it, a fa do we have people stealing in our community right now? It's like, it's becoming a, an increased problem. And if you put all of your efforts into things down here, and they get stolen, it can really r mess up your heart. I mean, it can make you hard-hearted, it can make you want to kill someone. Well, not you guys, just me. But... <laughs> You know, or chop a hand off or something. I mean, you know, m one of the kids asked me, why don't we go to like the Middle East where they just, you know, your first offense, you lose a finger and then another one and then your hand and, you know, the thieves, the thieves know there's an actual penalty for stealing because some of the kids had some of their stuff stolen and, and they're like, it's not fair. I worked hard for that. And when we put all that effort in and it gets taken away, it so quickly diverts us from the big eternal picture that you were created to be living for. You're not created just to live for here. If you live just for here and now, you are up for some big disappointments. Okay, because if your perspective isn't that long-run eternal perspective, you can't really cope well with here and now. Some people say to me, oh, pastor, you just want us to be heavenly minded. You'll get us so heavenly minded, we'll be of no earthly good. I said, no, that's not even true. That's impossible. The more heavenly minded you are, the more earthly good you become. Because the grip on the things down here loosens as your focus gets better on, the, on, on Christ. You know, Paul said in Corinthians, uh, I'm sorry, in Colossians, he said, keep seeking Christ our head, the head of the church, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. He says, continually seek him. Put your eyes on him. Fix him. The Hebrew word is rivet your eyes. Like, it, you know, when you rivet two pieces of metal together, 
it's really hard to get them apart. They're made to be permanently attached. So he says, put your eyes fixed on God. Keep them there. And any good pastor that you listen to, I sure hope he preaches to you to get your eyes on, on the Lord. Not on, the, not on that man, on the Lord. That's what Paul has been telling this church at Corinth. We're nothing. He's everything. Look at him. Get your eyes on him. Because that's the source of your strength. And that's the source of everything you're going to need. And now Paul is going to tell a secret that some of you probably have heard this verse many, many times. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I like this because it's one of those, you know, everyone knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he did what? Gave his only begotten his son. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. That's John 3.16. Today I'm going to teach you 1 Corinthians 3.16. And don't talk about getting the son. Guess what it talks about getting? Look at this right here. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Did you know that, how many of you have heard this verse, that you, your body is made to be a temple for the Holy Ghost? You are, and some people, you know, John 3.16, they learn of salvation. 1 Corinthians 3.16, you learn of the Spirit, that God's Spirit is made to be in you. Now, Jesus told his disciples when he was getting ready to leave the earth, he said, guys, it's, don't let your heart be troubled. I'm going to my father's house in John 14, 6. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it weren't so, I wouldn't tell you. But I go to prepare a place for you. That I can come and receive you to myself. So that where I am, you will be also. We get to go be with the Lord someday. And he's preparing a mansion for us. But for the time being, Paul says that while we're down here, this earthly body, he calls it a tent, by the way. Just a tent for my spirit. I'm just hanging out in it. I'm going to upgrade to a mansion, just so you know. I'm going to be much better looking when we get to heaven. Okay, you won't even recognize me. That's Izzy? Yep, yep. Got his glorified body. Mansion by God, you know. By the way, that's a different interpretation than an actual building. But see, God calls us his buildings down here. And a lot, of tr a lot of religious experiences, they make buildings as places of worship. And you have to go to these special buildings, these temples, and, and, and people say, oh, I go there to feel the presence of my God, whatever God they serve. Interestingly enough, in the scripture, we learn that God says, I put my spirit, not in physical man-made buildings, but he puts his spirit in what? In us. He says, i rather put my spirit in these portable buildings. That's what, you know, I love God. See, the next part of this passage, let me just read you a couple of these verses here. He says in verse 17, If any man destroys this temple of God, God will destroy him. He says, For the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. You are made holy. Separ holy means separated, set apart for a special use, a consecrated use. That's what God has for your body. He says, and let no man deceive himself. If anyone amongst you thinks that he is wise in this age, in this age, he says he must become foolish so that he can become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness before God. For it is written, he is the one who catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, it says, the Lord knows the reasonings of the wise, that they are useless. They're vain. They're nothing. You know, the wisest thoughts that we can have, the Bible says our highest thought is below God's lowest thought. You know, we think, oh God, if you could just do this and this. Have, have any of you ever prayed like, like in this manner? Oh Lord, if you could just do this and d get that person to give me this and get that to happen and forgive this bill and then that, and then my finances would be all in order, right? And God goes, that's a really funny plan. That was way down there, man. I would have never done that to you. I had something much better in my... See, because our greatest thought, just keep it in perspective, is way down here, and here's God's lowest thought for us, above that thought. So I had a better, much better... I was just going to let you, you know, look down and find a, all the cash right there on the corner of the house. You could have paid all the bills, forget all that stress, and... 
You know, we, we think we have it figured out, and God goes, no, you don't. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.